रिस्पेक्टेड ऑडियंस अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई एम प्रोफेसर शमसुद जमान प्रोफेसर पैथोलॉजी आई वेलकम ऑल इन टुडेज 36th लेक्चर ऑन पैथोलॉजी टुडे डे 2 ऑफ नियोप्लाज्म Today's topic is classification of neoplasm and some terms in neoplasm. Today's topic is classification of neoplasm and some terms in neoplasm. Dear audience, in day 1 of neoplasm, I have told you about the definition of neoplasm, component parts of neoplasm, I have told you about the suffix used in neoplasm. Today, come to first classification. Neoplasm is classified in many ways. One is on the basis of biological behavior, on the basis of cell origin or tissue origin, On the basis of differentiation, then on the basis of morphology. on the basis of hormone secretion. And T N M classification. Now, come to first on the basis of biological behavior. On the basis of biological behavior, neoplasm two type, one is benign neoplasm, another is malignant neoplasm. Benign neoplasm, it is non-aggressive neoplasm and it is non-fatal neoplasm. It is non-aggressive. neoplasm and it is non fatal neoplasm malignant neoplasm malignant neoplasm it is aggressive type of neoplasm and it is fatal neoplasm and it is fatal neoplasm so, on the basis of biological behavior, benign and malignant. Now, come to on the basis of cell origin. There are days, it is on the basis of cell origin or on the basis of tissue also. It is also called histogenic classification. It is called histogenic classification. It 
you know histamines tissue the neoplasm genesis from the tissue on the basis of tissue as per genesis of neoplasm it is called histogenic classification or classification on the basis of cell origin derodins on the basis of cell origin neoplasm may be neoplasm arising from the epithelial tissue so neoplasm may arise from the epithelial tissue and neoplasm may arise from the mesenchymal tissue first come to on the basis of cell origin or first come to the histogenic classification first neoplasm of the epithelial tissue then neoplasms of mesenchymal tissue the neoplasms of epithelial tissue may be benign and may be malignant also the epithelial tissue composed of a squamous cell so the benign tumor that arises from the squamous cell is called squamous cell papilloma nerodens we are talking about the histogenic classification first i am talking about the neoplasm of epithelial tissue derodens the tumor of squamous cell of epithelial tissue may be benign that is squamous cell papilloma and may be malignant squamous cell carcinoma so on the basis of biological behavior the tumor that arises from the squamous cell one is benign squamous cell papilloma another is malignant squamous cell carcinoma columnar cell the benign tumor of columnar cell is called adenoma and the malignant tumor that arises from the columnar cell is called adenocarcinoma glandular epithelium the benign tumor that arises from the glandular epithelium is adenoma and malignant tumor that arises from the glandular epithelium adenocarcinoma transitional cell of unit tract that is the uroepithelium the benign tumor of transitional cell is transitional cell papilloma and malignant is transitional cell carcinoma basal cell there is no benign tumor of basal cell but there is malignant tumor of basal cell basal cell carcinoma so these are the tumors of epithelial tissue on the basis of cell origin or histogenic classification now come to tumors of mesenchymal cells tumors of mesenchymal cells one is fat cell or adipose tissue the benign tumor of fat cell or adipose tissue is called lipoma 
and malignant tumor of fat cell or adipose tissue is called liposarcoma. Fibroblast. The benign tumor of fibroblast is called fibroma. And malignant tumor of fibroblast is called fibrosarcoma. A smooth muscle. The benign tumor of smooth muscle is called leomyoma. And malignant tumor of smooth muscle is leomyosarcoma. skeletal muscle. The benign tumor of skeletal muscle is called rhabdomyoma. And malignant tumor of skeletal muscle is called rhabdomyosarcoma. Osteoblast. The benign tumor of osteoblast is called osteoma, and malignant tumor is called osteosarcoma or osteogenic sarcoma. Cartilage. That is tumor of chondrocyte. The benign tumor is called chondroma and malignant tumor of cartilage or chondrocyte is chondrosarcoma. Notochord, there is no benign tumor of notochord only malignant chordoma. Meninges, the benign tumor of meninges is meningioma. And malignant tumor of meninges meningeal sarcoma. Gerodines, these are the histogenic classifications briefly. Now, come to on the basis of differentiation. Classification on the basis of differentiation. Dear students, we have to know first what is differentiation. What do you mean about differentiation? Extent of resemblance of tumor cell or new plastic cell with the normal cell is known as differentiation. So, extent of resemblance of the tumor cell with the normal cell is known as resemblance. On the basis of differentiation, neoplasm may be 
well differentiated neoplasm well differentiated neoplasm when we call a neoplasm is well differentiated when we call a neoplasm is well differentiated when more than 75 percent tumor cells or neoplastic cells resemble with the normal cells is known as well differentiated neoplasm. When in a neoplasm more than 75 percent of neoplastic cells or more than 75 percent of the tumor cells resemble with the normal cells, then the tumor is called well differentiated neoplasm or well differentiated tumor. Suppose this is liver and within the liver there is a neoplasm, this is neoplasm and there is neoplastic cells. If more than 75 percent of the neoplastic cells resemble with the normal hepatocyte. If more than 75 percent neoplastic cells resemble with the normal cells of the liver, then that tumor or neoplasm is called well differentiated neoplasm. Then moderately differentiated neoplasm. When you call a neoplasm is moderately differentiated, when more than 50 percent, but less than 75 percent neoplastic cells resemble with normal cells, then it is called moderately differentiated neoplasm. Again, when more than 50 percent, but less than 75 percent neoplastic cells resemble with the normal cells, then it is called moderately differentiated neoplasm. If this is neoplasm in a liver, if more than 50 percent of these neoplastic cells, but less than 75 percent neoplastic cells resemble with the normal cells of the liver, then the tumor is known as moderately differentiated neoplasm. Poorly differentiated neoplasm. When a neoplasm is called poorly differentiated neoplasm, when more than 25 percent but less than 50 percent neoplastic cells, neoplastic cells resembles with normal cell. Again, when more than 25 percent but less than 50 percent neoplastic cells resemble the normal cell, then it is called poorly differentiated neoplasm. Now come to undifferentiated neoplasm. When less than 25 percent neoplastic cells resemble with normal cell, when less than 25 percent neoplastic cells resemble with the normal cell, then the tumor is called undifferentiated tumor or undifferentiated neoplasm. There are audience, this classification is done by histopathologist. Now come to on the basis of morphology. 
classification on the basis of morphology. It is also called morphological classification. It is called morphological classification. On the basis of morphology, the neoplasm may be ulcerative, neoplasm, cauliflower like. neoplasm, fungating neoplasm, it may be pedunculated neoplasm and it may be infiltrative neoplasm. So, on the basis of morphology, it may be ulcerative when on the surface of the neoplasm there is ulcerations, it is called ulcerative neoplasm. When the surface of the neoplasm looks like cauliflower, it is called cauliflower like. If there is fungus on the surface of the neoplasm, it is called fungating. If there is peduncle, it is called pedunculated, but if it infiltrates in the tissue, it is called infiltrative neoplasm. Dear audience, first come to ulcerative type. I have told you the neoplasm on which surface there is ulceration, it is called ulcerative type of neoplasm. First we have to know what is ulcer. Ulcer is the bridge of continuity of the surface epithelium due to slapping out of inflammatory necrotic tissue. Dear audience, in some tumors we get ulceration on the surface, especially the cancer or neoplasm of the breast and cancer of the stomach. Dear audience, suppose this is breast. If there is tumor within the breast, we can get ulceration in the skin. Suppose this is a stomach. And if there is a tumor on it, we can get ulceration on the surface. Why ulceration occurs in the tumor on its surface? There are days you know in cancer or tumor there is rapid proliferation of the cells. Due to rapid proliferation of the cells, there is expansion of the tumor. Due to expansion of the tumor in the breast, the skin become stressed and due to expansion of tumor in the breast as there is a stretching of the skin on this breast, there is compression of the blood vessels. Due to compression of blood vessels in the skin of the breast, skin under ischemic necrosis. So, there is ulceration. Again, if expansion of the cancer of tumor in the stomach due to expansion on the surface of the tumor of the stomach, there is a stressing and there is compression of the blood vessels. So, there is ischemia and there is ischemic necrosis and ultimately ulcerations. Cauliflower like surface is cauliflower like, fungating there is fungus growth, pedunculated. Suppose this this surface, if a tumor arises here like a peduncle and ultimately the mass is here, mass is here. So, this is the actual mass of the tumor and this is the peduncle of the tumor. This is pedunculated type. Now, come to infiltrative type. What we mean about infiltrative type? Suppose this is a liver and within the liver there is a cancer. If the cancer cells infiltrate in between the hepatocytes, then it is called infiltrative type of neoplasm. 
now come to on the basis of hormone secretion on the basis of hormone secretion dear audience there are some cancers of tumors that can secrete hormone we know hormone is secreted from the endocrine glands but if some tumors that are not arising from the endocrine gland but if they secretes hormone these are called hormone secreting tumors on the basis of hormone secretion tumor may be hormone secreting tumor the tumors that can secret hormone these are called hormone secreting tumor example oat cell carcinoma it is one of the small cell tumor of lung it is one of the small cell bronchogenic carcinoma this cancer or tumor secretes ac th hormone choreo carcinoma it is one of the trophoblastic tumor it secretes hcg granulosa cell tumor granulosa cell tumor of ovary it secretes estrogen so these are the hormone secreting tumors and there are many tumors that cannot secrete hormone non hormone secreting tumors non hormone secret tumors like squamous cell carcinoma leomyoma etc so on the basis of hormone secretion now come to tnm classification tnm classification dear students tnm classification is to be narrated during grading and staging of tumor dear students now come to in some tissues where there is only malignant tumor arises no benign tumor arises from them what are those only malignant neoplasm but no benign only malignant neoplasm but there is no benign neoplasm basal cell carcinoma that arises from the basal cell but there is no benign tumor of basal cell lymphoma it is a malignant neoplasm of lymphoid tissue there is no benign part leukemia malignant neoplasm of hematopoietic stem cell there is no benign neoplasm carcinoid tumor carcinoid tumor a malignant tumor of apud cell system or neuroendocrine cells there is no benign part so briefly these are the only malignant neoplasms where there is no benign part dear audience i have told you classification on the basis of biological behavior benign malignant on the basis of cell origin histogenic on the basis of morphology on the basis of differentiation on the basis of hormone secretion etc but in our practicing life 
which classification we used. In practicing life, which classification we use? In practicing life, we use the combined classification. The combined classification. Combination between combination between biological behavior and cell origin. Combination between biological behavior and cell origin. Example, if we say the individual is suffering from carcinoma of stomach carcinoma of stomach then we can say carcinoma is a malignant tumor so on the basis of biological behavior it is a malignant tumor and carcinoma arises from the epithelial tissue arises from the epithelial tissue. So, carcinoma means on the basis of biological behavior it is malignant and on the basis of cell origin it arises from the epithelial tissue. So, carcinoma of stomach it is nothing but combination between the biological behavior and cell origin. If we say anybody is suffering from leomyoma, leomyoma leomyoma is a benign neoplasm. So, on the basis of biological behavior it is benign and on the basis of cell origin it arises from the smooth muscle. So, we use the combined classification in practicing life combination between biological behavior and cell origin. Dear audience, now come to some terms. Cancer. What we mean by cancer? Malignant neoplasm is called cancer. Malignant neoplasm is called cancer. Dear audience, if we say somebody is suffering from cancer, what it means? it means the individual is suffering from malignant neoplasm. Carcinoma. What is carcinoma? Malignant neoplasm that arises from the epithelial tissue is called carcinoma. So, the malignant neoplasm or cancer that arises from epithelial tissue is called carcinoma. Example, squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma of stomach. So, these are the malignant tumors of epithelial tissue. Sarcoma. What is sarcoma? Malignant neoplasm of mesenchymal tissue is called sarcoma.
Dear audience, if the malignant tumor arises from the epithelial tissue, it is called carcinoma. If it arises from the mesenchymal tissue, it is called sarcoma. So, malignant tumor or cancer may be carcinoma or may be sarcoma. Example of sarcoma, fibrosarcoma, malignant tumor of fibroblast, liposarcoma, malignant tumor of adipose tissue, osteosarcoma or osteogenic sarcoma, malignant tumor of bone forming cell. Now come to carcinoid. Carcinoid is a malignant tumor of neuroendocrine cells, that is malignant tumor of apud cell system. It is malignant tumor or it is cancer or malignant tumor of neuro endocrine cells. That is, this is the malignant nucleosome of apud cell system. That is, malignant nucleosome of apud cell system is called carcinoid. So, malignant tumor or cancer of neuroendocrine cell is called carcinoid. It is also called malignant tumor of apud cell system. Why it is called carcinoid? Because it looks like carcinoma. We know carcinoma is a malignant tumor or carcinoma is a cancer of epithelial tissue. The malignant tumor that arises from epithelial tissue is called carcinoma. As carcinoid does not arises from the epithelial tissue rather it arises from the neuroendocrine cells. So, it is not called carcinoma, but it looks like carcinoma. So, it is called carcinoid tumor. Now, come to apud cell systems. Amine precursor amine precursor uptake decarboxylation. Aput means amine precursor uptake decarboxylation. The cells of aput cell systems Kulsitsky cell Argentofin cell, chromaffin cell, etcetera. These are the apud cell systems. There are, means, there are some common characteristics of these cells. What are those common characteristics? Common characteristics of Apud cell system. All cells originate from neural crest of ectoderm. So, one of the characteristics of the cell, all the cells arises or originates from the neural crest of ectoderm. The cell can uptake amine precursor. And all the cells can decarboxylate this, can decarboxylate them. So, these are the characteristics, common characteristics 
of Apu's cell system. The malignant tumor that arises from these cells is called carcinoid. Now come to types of carcinoid. Two types, one is functional carcinoid, another is non functional carcinoid. First, come to functional carcinoid. There is again. I want to recall it is a malignant tumor of apu cell system that is it is a malignant tumor of neuroendocrine cells. It is not carcinoma, it is carcinoid. It may be functional, it may be non-functional. Which one is called functional? The carcinoid that produces syndrome is called functional carcinoid. So, functional carcinoid produces syndrome. such as carcinoid syndrome. Another syndrome is Jolinger Ellison syndrome. These are the examples of syndrome that are produced by functional carcinoid. There are non-functional carcinoid are those carcinoid although these are malignant tumor of the neuroendocrine cells they cannot produce any syndrome. Now, come to common sites of carcinoid. Tip of appendix terminal ileum and other sites. Other sites number 1 other part of GI tract, lung, liver, ovary. These are the different sites of carcinoid tumor most common site is appendix. Dear audience, now come to adenoma. Benign tumor of gland is called adenoma or benign tumor that arises from columnar cell and produces glandular pattern. is called adenoma. Again, benign tumor of gland is called adenoma or benign tumor that arises from the columnar cell and produces glandular pattern, it is called adenoma. Dear audience, suppose this is the parotid gland. If from the parotid gland epithelium that is development of a benign tumor, then it is called adenoma of parotid gland. So, benign tumor of parotid gland is known as adenoma. Suppose these are the columnar cell, columnar cells. If from the columnar cells a benign tumor arises and within the benign tumor that arises from the columnar cell there is production of glandular pattern then it is called adenoma. So, benign tumor of gland is called adenoma or benign tumor of columnar cell that produces glandular pattern is called adenoma.
Now come to papilloma. What is papilloma? It is tongue like or finger like projection from the skin. So, tongue like or finger like projection from the skin is known as papilloma. It is called viral wart because it is caused by a virus known as human papilloma virus. It is called viral wart because it is caused by human papilloma virus. It is nothing but a benign neoplasm of squamous epithelium. It is benign neoplasm of squamous epithelium, squamous cell. There are ends, if this is skin and this is the viral wart or this is the tongue like or finger like projection of the skin and it is the papilloma. If we cut the papilloma cross sectionally or in longitudinal section, what may be the structure? It has a core, it has a core, core composed of fibrovascular tissue, composed of fibrovascular tissue and the core is lined by a stratified squamous epithelium. So, if it is the longitudinal section, this is the fibrovascular core and it is lined by a stratified squamous epithelium like this. If we do the cross section, this is the fibrovascular core and it is lined by a stratified squamous epithelium. This is the papilloma. Now come to polyp. Polyp is the tongue like or finger like projection from the mucosal surface. So, tongue like or finger like projection from mucosal surface is called polyp and tongue like or finger like projection from the skin is called papilloma. There are today up to this, thanks all.